Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, my buddy Greg up in Queensland has sent me down a small job here to do today and um, I thought it would be an interesting little project to share with you guys on YouTube. Let's take a look at it. So these are some aluminium parts that are obviously he's bought somewhere and they look like some sort of tooth pulley, uh, sort of like, you know, like to run a timing belt or something like that. Um, uh, Greg's right into robotics and Greg's actually built his own working R2-D2, the little robot off Star Wars, so he's quite a clever cookie. Um, he's got these other shafts here, so just looking at here, there's no real drawings or dimensions or tolerances on here. He wants an 8mm through hole all the way through this pulley here and it doesn't have a hole in it at the moment. So work holding is going to be a bit of a problem holding this but I think I know how to do it. When people want you to drill holes I'm a little bit worried because you know drill bits don't always drill to a critical size. I know you can buy step down you know 0.1 drill bits and that sort of stuff in smaller increments but I've got in this ream so I'll drill it roughly to size and then ream it to get an accurate size which is good. Uh, these shafts here with the thread on the end now they're going to be a little bit more of a bugger to hold um, and to get accurate but anyway he wants this this is a 10 mil shaft with a thread on it and he wants that turned down parallel turned down to eight millimeters so we'll see how we go with that i brought you over to the lathe and i've got the bison 5c collet chuck on and this is the one that uh, Paul Frink over at Cape Cod CNC donated to the channel and it's a bloody ripper. I'm really, really happy I got it. Um, this is not holding on by much. I've just grasped onto that little end bit there. Now I've spoken to Greg and these aren't high RPM pulleys. That's not doing, you know, 10,000 RPM. It's quite slow. Um, I'm getting about 50 microns, which is 0.05 of a millimetre run out. Um, it's as good as I can get it. I've, I've mucked around with it, tapped it, moved it, you name it. That, that's all I can get. I'll enlarge that hole now. I'll bring it up to uh, 7.5. Okay, so I've got my chucking reamer here. It's an 8mm one. Going to give it a good spray with some of this Trefilex. Going to use that up the backside. And away we go. And that's uh, cutting like a hot knife going through butter, to be honest with you. Just going to keep chasing it up with the tail stock. That's uh, nice and sharp, that reamer. I can feel that cutting. Seven and a half millimetres, not the right drill size for this reamer. But considering it's aluminium, it's fairly soft. It's just doing it no worries at all.
So I'm up to these two little parts now, and as I was saying before, they're 10 millimetres. They've got a thread on it. That needs to be sheened down to 8 mil. It's really hard to hold this, okay? And look, I could probably put the four jaw back in and clock it in, but it's going to take me ages, and I just want to get this in and out of the workshop. So I've changed the collet over, the 5C collet over, to an 18 mil collet. I've got a bit of steel on there, and I just gave it a slight tickle to match that internal diameter there. And it's it's snug as, right? So I'm going to just rely on friction to turn this, so high RPM, bit of friction. I'm going to put a live centre up the end here as well, put a little bit of pressure on it, and fingers crossed um, I can get this diameter down. That's roughly 300 of a millimetre, so 30 micron. It is what it is. So let's face it, this part is not going in a jet engine. Um, it's for these little robots, so I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm just going to machine that now. Right, I had to turn the camera off before, um, my tailstock was out, and it was out by a lot, it was about half a mil over this distance, and I'm a little bit gobsmacked wired, maybe I re-leveled the lathe, reset the tailstock with the um, tailstock alignment tool, and for the life of me, I thought I had it spot on, but yeah, unless it's moved, I've got no idea. Anyway, so, moving on, I'm going to take a cut, I, I adjusted the tailstock, I've been chasing my tail a little bit here. I'm still a little bit oversized, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a cut now and auto feed in reverse. Well, that's it for today. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not very happy with my <laughs> with my work today. I'm a little bit embarrassed. So um, that tailstock being out of alignment caught me out, and um, I nearly uh, how would you say that Latin word? F u ucked that part. Um, it, I just saved it. Like it's a little bit loose there, but then it's snug as a bug up in here. All right, so yeah, not some of my finest work, I have to say. Um, I was having one of those days. It's late in a Saturday afternoon here and had a pretty hard week with uh, lockdown and all that rubbish, and uh, I probably shouldn't have come out to the shop. I thought, no, I'll get out here and get stuck into these parts for Greg. Uh, off camera, um, I remachined this one, and it's perfect. I'm really, really happy with that one. Okay, and it's just, oh. Beautiful, okay? But yeah, this one's not, not my finest work. It will still work, it will get Greg out of trouble. Um, so Greg, there you go, mate. Um, I'm not gonna charge you for this because I'm a little bit embarrassed, all right? So anyway, shit happens. Uh, another thing off, off camera here, guys, I'll, do, I'll show it here in a minute. I'm having one of those days. I'm turning the rim of the wrong bloody way. I'm turning it anti-clockwise instead of turning it clockwise. I don't know what the freaking hell I, think, I was thinking. Well, that's it for today. Show's over. Uh, I'll see you next week. Got a little joke to leave you. I'll put it on the outtakes, all right? I think I was winding the cunt backwards. Yeah, I was winding it backwards, you fucking idiot. Righto, there was a very famous uh, Hollywood actress, and uh, 
she's uh, long gone now, you know, God rest her soul, and uh, I can't say her name, but let's just call her Beth Tuna. And old Beth Tuna's been married a few times, so I think she was heading for her eighth wedding, and uh, she went and saw a plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills and said, look, uh, Doc, I, you know, I want to, this is my final last hurrah, my last marriage, and uh, I like a little bit of a, uh, a tidy up down below and uh, a veggie plastic. He's, but she said, listen, I don't want anyone to know about it. I don't want the paparazzi in here. It, this has to be secret. No one is to know. Plastic surgeon goes, look, I, I fully understand, Beth. Uh, I'll look after you, not a problem at all. Anyway, went under the knife. Operation was a smashing success. When she came to, there was three vases with roses in it. She went ballistic, called the nurse in there. You know, get the surgeon here now. I want him here now. And surgeon comes running in. What's, what's, what's the matter? What's the matter? I told you this was a secret. No one was to know. Now, 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 settle down, settle down. The plastic surgeon goes, settle down. I've told no one. Well, she goes, who are these bloody flowers from? She goes, listen, listen. I'm honoured to work on you. I've followed your career all my life. I'm a hugest fan. The first set of roses are for me. She goes, well, who, who were the others from? Well, like me, the, the anaesthetist has followed your career. He's in love with you also. He's brought you a set of you know, flowers as well to say, look, thank you for having trust, trust and faith in him to be your anaesthetist. She goes, all right, well, what's the third bunch of roses from? She goes, oh, well, they're from a guy down in the Burns unit to say thanks for the new ears.